Naomi Osaka is one of the most prolific up-and-coming tennis stars in the world, and with good reason. She upset Serena Williams at the 2018 US Open, and ever since then has been on a bit of a rampage in terms of winning. But recently, the young phenom has had a series of setbacks, including a recent parting of ways with the two-year-long relationship. In this video, we are going to be going over who that relationship was with and what it means for the star going forward. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. First up, a horrible breakup of sorts adds another bump in Osaka's road. I feel as though I may have misled some of you when I said she had to go through a bad breakup, as breakups usually are associated with romantic relationships ending. This is more of a mutual departure of sorts, as Osaka and her coach of the last two years, Wim Facet, have decided to part ways and pursue other opportunities. The split was confirmed on Instagram when Facet decided to post a heartfelt goodbye and farewell to his former student. Facet said, It has been a privilege to coach Naomi since 2019 and see her grow into the champion she has become. He continued on by saying, She has inspired a whole new generation to fall in love with the game and to speak up for what they believe in, and it's been incredible to play a part in that journey. Thank you, at Naomi Osaka. I wish you all the best and looking forward to my next chapter. It is slightly odd that this is coming now, but it may be Osaka recognizing that she needs to turn the page on this past chapter and start anew, as she has been a tad shaky recently. However, with Facet at the helm, Osaka won two Grand Slam titles, bringing her total count to four. She won the Australian Open in 2021 and the 2020 US Open, so it would really seem like you could not ask for much more from a coach that helped you win two Open championships. But with what has gone on in Osaka's life may have forced her hand in this situation. So. Why did Osaka and Facet part ways? Facet is clearly a talented coach, who has found success with many athletes before helping out Osaka. Facet has helped a great deal of athletes win Grand Slam titles, including Kim Kleisters and Angela Kerber. He also had a great deal of success with his time with Simona Halep, Joanna Conta, Sabine Lisicki, and Victoria Azarenka. So if he has proven himself to be an amazing coach, and he also had proven that his methods could help Osaka win at the highest level, why would they part ways? Was it something that Osaka did? Honestly, it may just be Osaka's style. As before she and Facet decided to join forces back in 2020, Osaka had gone through three coaches in less than a year. While those coaches were not quite as successful as Facet, it is weird that she went through so many coaches in such a small span. It seems like Osaka recognizes that when something feels wrong in her game or she loses passion for the game, she doesn't like to wallow in her own pity. She does whatever she can to make sure that she can get back to the top of her game and be back to being the best as soon as possible. And that may require her to clean house. She may need to change everything in her surroundings in order to become something new. It's like a snake shedding its skin. The old skin wasn't bad, it was just time to grow and change. It doesn't mean that either one of Osaka or Facet are bad. It just means it is time for a change. Since they have decided to part ways, Osaka has not made any comments, so we don't really know if there was something else going on or if there was another reason for their split. All we can do now is patiently wait for Osaka to hire a new coach and for Facet to announce who he's going to coach in the future. We know that both of them are not even close to retiring, so what are they going to do next? And what does this mean for Osaka's young career? As of this recording, things are trending downhill for Osaka right now. Osaka is a tremendous talented tennis player, but things have been going poorly for her over the past few months. For starters, she is at a massive slide down the rankings as she now sits at 38th in the world. Moreover, she decided to skip Wimbledon in 2021, and she decided to pull out of the French Open this past year halfway through the tournament, citing her mental health as the reason she decided to quit. At her last event, Osaka was verbally abused by a fan who decided to yell, you suck Naomi, while she was was preparing for a serve. So obviously, she heard the taunt and she was very public with her feelings, saying that it really affected her mentally as she struggled to finish the rest of the game. She plans on making her return to pro tennis on August 1st when the Silicon Valley Classic kicks off. However, that may not end up being possible as she did suffer an Achilles injury during the French Open during her first round match. Hopefully, she can be fully prepared both mentally and physically for this upcoming tournament. But obviously, 
obviously, we won't know until she takes the court come August 1st. If things go as planned, this will be the first step towards a comeback for the tennis star who hopes to retake her spot at the top of the women's rankings. Of course, she has not been there for a while, and people think that they can trace this fall all the way back to her skipping her press time with reporters back in 2021 at the French Open. She declined to speak to the press due to her departure from the tournament, which was forced upon her due to heavy bouts of depression and anxiety. While I have to disagree with the fans who think her recent bumpy road was caused by her skipping out on her pressers and not the mental health issues that made her skip the pressers in the first place, it is hard to deny that clearly her very unfortunate mental health decline is the cause of her recent performance skid, and due to the nature of her sport, it is clear to see that this is the culprit. Next, tennis is a difficult beast to conquer. Tennis is much harder to play at a pro level than most other sports. And I say that not due to its physical requirements, but its mental ones. Physically, it is a very difficult sport, of course. It requires stamina, strength, and finesse in a way that virtually every other sport cannot compete with. However, it is definitely not the most physically taxing sport as there is no physical contact with your opponent, and the game does have a good amount of stoppages in the action. For these reasons, it is clear that when an athlete begins to decline in their performance while in their prime years, it is clear that physical performance is not the culprit. Tennis is one of the most mentally taxing sports in the world, because you are all alone on the court. There are no teammates to lean on and no other teammates to blame. There is just you. All of the criticisms, all of the abuse, all of the eyes, they are only on you. It is impossible to not feel the tremendous weight of pressure from fans, coaches, and family members as they watch you perform. If you make a mistake, you only have yourself to blame. If you lose a match, you only have yourself to blame. While you are battling against another player, it is essentially you against you out there on the court, and it is very difficult to get over these mental hurdles and just play the game at the highest level. And Osaka, despite her effort and her natural talent, is no exception to this. In fact, any tennis player who plays the sport at a pro or amateur level is no exception to this. Playing tennis is not very easy on your mental health, and it is for this exact reason that we need to stand with our athletes instead of against them. We do not need to push them to be better, as they do this to themselves more than we ever could. The only thing they hear when we say something to them online or in person is that we are unhappy with them and that they are not good enough. Newsflash, guys, that is simply not fair. They are under all the pressure in the world, and adding more to their plate is just unnecessary. We wish all the best for Osaka in her future future endeavors, both physically and mentally, and we can't wait to see her play on August 1st at the Silicon Valley Classic. That's all we have for you guys today on the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you all in the next one.